Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we have to talk about the tropics once more because there is a lot going on. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Now for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you guys think that any of these will become a hurricane? Let me know why and leave it in a comment and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get into this video and we're taking a look at the whole Atlantic on our two day graphical tropical weather outlook. And as you can see, there's three on the two day. There's going to be four actually on the, on the five day outlook. So we'll get to that in a second. There's actually a surprise disturbance there by the East Coast. This should not even be a surprise because we've seen this so many times here along the East Coast this year and it's happening once more. We have two tropical depressions that formed yesterday and overnight. We have tropical depression 17 and tropical depression 18. 18 seems to have the highest potential intensity for now, but we'll, we will see. Let's go over the five day graphical tropical weather outlooks individually, starting out here with the disturbance that you didn't see on the two day outlook. And this is going to have a 30% chance over the next five days. And then we have our one heading towards the East coast, actually in a really odd direction, heading from East to West, potentially going to impact the Carolinas or Virginia, uh, depending on intensity. That's all going to uh, just have to be one of those things where we wait and see. But for now we have a 30% chance of development over the next five days with that one heading directly Westward. Very, very odd there. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the cone forecast for both of the tropical depressions, which are both expected to be at least tropical storms. We'll take a look at that in a second. Now, first off, let's take a look at tropical depression 17. And as you can see, it's actually expected to be a tropical storm uh, by later this morning. Actually, from the time this video is uploaded, it will probably be a tropical storm. That seems to happen a lot. I make these videos before 8 a.m. So what happens is a hurricane, a National Hurricane Center update usually comes at 8 a.m. So what always happens is like it'll become a hurricane or something will happen with the storm I'm talking about. And then people will comment. It's a hurricane now. It always happens. It's really aggravating. Um, so <laughs> that's just, I'm guessing it's probably going to be a tropical storm by 8 a.m. Unfortunately, you can see it's the 5 a.m. update there on the bottom left. All right, so it's going to remain a tropical storm heading generally westward. Is it going to head towards the Bahamas or out the sea? We'll have to wait and see, but this is a very, very slow mover. Let's move on and talk about tropical depression 18 now. And as you can see, this one is heading directly westward. You're going to probably curve northward. I'm expecting this one to probably be a fish storm because of the direction it's heading. But the National Hurricane Center does think this one will be a hurricane by 5 a.m. on Thursday and a tropical storm probably this afternoon here on September 7th. Very, very interesting. The tropics are extremely active right now. We have four separate systems to track. We're approaching the absolute peak of the season. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens with all four of these systems. The tropics are exploding right now. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on. And we're going to take a look at the satellite imagery and spaghetti model, as well as intensity guidance for both of our depressions. All right, now here we are taking a look first off at our tropical depression 17. Looks like it's pretty close to a tropical storm here. You can tell there's some rotation going on uh, in the correct direction because of that very northern side. You can see those bands. Uh, this looks like it's pretty close to a tropical storm. Like I said, would not be surprised. Actually, matter of fact, I'd be surprised if it's not a tropical storm by time of reaching uh, 12 a.m. tonight uh, heading into the 8th. So there's that. The tropical spaghetti model guidance has two options here. One is much more popular than the other. We have one set of models that like it to just head directly north after a certain point. It's only two models there. However, there is a huge group of models that has it heading pretty much westward and then eventually curving a little bit northward. But with the current steering pattern, that is not going to rule out a east coast impact. You can see they kind of curve back uh, to where they're heading directly westward again there towards the end. This one's going to be long lived and it's going to be interesting to track this one. It's very unusual to see a storm track that far north and still impact the United States, but it's not unheard of. So I'm not letting my guard down just yet for this one. Now, what we're going to do here is take a look at the GEFS model spaghetti model guidance here. And as you can see, uh, they do have a pretty far curve north as of right now. These ensemble models are known for flipping around all over the place. This was the 6C run. The 12Z run will be out 
uh, pretty shortly. You can probably go find that, actually. Uh, but a lot of these members, actually, in the reds there have this one intensifying quite greatly. Those dark reds would probably be a hurricane. Very interesting there. Uh, there is a few members that keep it further south, heading more towards the United States and not curving back eastward again. Uh, but those ones keep it relatively weak. So a lot of options are on the table here. Going to be very interesting to track this one moving forward. Real quickly, here's the intensity guidance. And as you can see, uh, every single model has this one becoming a tropical storm. So it is 90% chance at least that we will see a tropical storm out of this one. Tropical Depression 17L. There is still that slim chance that it doesn't. Obviously, the models all could be wrong. We've seen that before, uh, but I think it's extremely likely that we at least see a named storm out of this one, and then it will weaken. I don't think a hurricane is very likely at all from 17L. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to move on and take a look at Tropical Depression 18. Once we move on, take a look at the same things, the satellite imagery, spaghetti models, and intensity guidance. All right, so here we are taking a look first off at the satellite imagery here for our Tropical Depression 18. And as you can see, this one actually has some nice spin to it as well. It's just coming offshore of Africa. So this one is getting to a very early start and above average, a very, very early start here. Has some nice spin to it. Again, this one is likely to be a tropical storm within the next 24 hours as well. So we should be getting two named storms very, very soon. Uh, let's take a look at that spaghetti model guidance. And as you can see, generally heading westward uh, and then a big spread in where it could head uh, starts to occur. Is it going to keep heading in a very west northwest direction uh, still not favorable for an east coast impact thankfully or will it completely curve back eastward uh, and kind of be a major fish storm uh, i think a fish storm is very likely from this one as we move on to the gefs model it becomes apparent uh, that this one is likely to just curve back eastward and never even scrape or sniff the east coast of the united states that seems like the most likely option at this point but you can see a lot of these members have it spinning back around and then heading west potentially heading back east again. This one's going to be confusing, and it's going to take a long time to track as well. Let's go ahead and quickly take a look at that intensity guidance. And as you can see, the potential is higher with this one, but the bust chance is much higher with this one as well. What I mean by bust chance is the chance of it just never becoming a tropical storm. You can see there's actually maybe five models that have this one really just hardly scraping tropical storm status. Uh, but there's also a huge group of models that have this one heading towards category one status as well. The likelihood of this one becoming a tropical storm is likely uh, 70 to 80% chance as well. There is a few models that say no, uh, but they even they eventually have this one becoming a tropical storm except for one. Uh, so it's very likely that we see two tropical storms out of both of these systems, like I said before. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the Saharan dust. We're going to take a look at why this season is picking back up again, and then we're going to close out the video. Now, there's one thing I wanted to talk about as well, and a lot of people have been saying this hurricane season has been a bust, and look, that's going to be said every year no matter how active it is. The thing is, we've had less hurricanes and less major hurricanes than what is typical. However, we have had well above average record-breaking named storms, uh, and here's the reason why. We've had a ton of Saharan dust and a ton of shear this year, but the sea surface temperatures have been record-breakingly favorable. So the thing is, we've had these storms easily develop into named storms, and then they really begin to struggle from the dry air and the shear. That's why we've had tons of named storms, even record-breaking amounts of named storms, and we're likely going to get into Greek names. Although the chances of us having far above average hurricanes or major hurricanes is dwindling as we're reaching the, the ending period of the hurricane season, which is October, where we start to see a limited chance uh, of those of those storms. That's our last little window of opportunity as we get into the later half of September and October. So it's very possible that we break the record for most named storms this year, although as far as hurricanes and major hurricanes go, it's pretty apparent that we're going to go down as a more average year when it comes to those two factors, which is pretty interesting to see uh, those two be very, very different. Now let's go ahead and take a look at that Saharan dust. And as you can see, there's actually a huge reduction in the amount of that dry air that we've seen. Uh, it used to be lots of reds and lots of pinks all the way across the Atlantic, and that's really dissipating. Will this open up the window to see more hurricanes and more major hurricanes? Could we possibly get into that above average column on the hurricanes and major hurricanes as well? It's not likely, but it is certainly possible if, if things start to really pick up here during the second half of September and maybe even in through October and November sometimes. Uh, holds a little bit of a chance for more named storms, potentially a hurricane, though very, very unlikely. 
So it's one of those cases where we're just going to have to wait and see. Again, the dry air has been the number one thing hindering those storms from developing further into a hurricane or a major hurricane. So with the reduction of that, that means the chance kind of opens up. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, with our major September snowstorm, I asked you guys, who do you think will see the most snowfall? And Zeta Derv said, as usual, the higher elevations will see the most snow, possibly 12 inches or more. And I have to agree, this early on in the season especially, I think this is going to be an elevation storm where elevation is going to play a major role in this storm. I think even one to two feet of snow isn't rolled out there for the higher elevations. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Diamond patrons, Madbirds, Dan Hazard, Mark J, and Alicia Davis, alongside our Platinum patron, Donna Carnes. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. I'll see you guys in the next video.